to install our transom material in Ruhart to get to places. <coughs> it contains about 50% percent recount fiberglass, long fibers. It makes it incredibly strong. Uh, here we are injecting it into a cavity. It takes about 12 minutes in this case. Uh, this is an older boat. The transom had totally deteriorated. We bought it rotting uh, we again. Got it out for that matter. Here you see our material used in a new boat installation. Uh, this was designed to make it easy, like a built-in funnel. This particular transom takes exactly five gallons, and it takes seven minutes to install it. In uh, four years and two boats a day, they have never had a failure. Even so, some of their boats hang uh, two, 200 you horsepower see an engines impact on testing that. of the transom material. 20 pound weight, eight feet. What you see here is spray core. What you see here is sea wolf. Uh, you have to watch it to see it bounce. In fact, we w did that 210 times and did not destroy it. Here you see the bending test. Again, core spray or spray core. We are going down in 200 pound intervals. The deflection on uh, spray core was about 30% higher than Seawolf, Seacast and it broke about 5% sooner, even with that higher deflection. Here we have a very old boat, built around 1946. I've never seen one like this before or after. The stringers and ribs are made up of rowing and, re and resin by hand. It's extremely light but very strong. The transom was a piece of plywood glued to the outer skin and had deteriorated. Besides, it wasn't strong enough to hold the motor he wanted to hang on there anyway. It also had no inner skin. The customer had never worked with fiberglass, but he did a pretty good job. He sanded the outer skin thoroughly, added a layer of mat and resin, some spacers, block, some spacer blocks to get the right thickness for the transom. Here he is adding a layer of ounce and a half mat and catalyzed resin to the outer skin to reinforce it.
Did you meet the wrong one? Then they went ahead and made a temporary mold out of the old plywood piece by adding uh, and nailing an eighth inch sheet of polyethylene to it. The inner thin then consisted of a layer of ounce and a half mat, one layer of 24 ounce woven roving, and another layer of ounce and a half mat with catalyzed resin, of course. The whole assembly was then put in place and clamped to form a pocket for the sea cast. They left the glass stick over the plywood about two or three inches and this glass will now be used to tie the inner layer to the existing hull. They carefully measured out the MEK peroxide, which is the hardener, and mixing this in first before you before they add the reinforcement.
here comes the reinforcement and you gotta make sure to spend enough time mixing it in it'll take at least six full minutes When I do this, I definitely wear some protective clothing, uh, eye protection, and gloves, because that stuff itches quite a bit if you get it on your, your skin. use your judgment when you add the reinforcement uh, if you make it too thick you're gonna have a hard time getting it into the cavity but on the other hand if you want maximum strength you use as much as you can get in there those guys ended up hanging like 150 horsepower on their little boat so they wanted it as strong as possible and using a rubber hammer bouncing it off the hull sure helps settling the material in the cavity and driving out the air
Now they've taken the clamps off. Pulling the false transom piece out. And remove the temporary reinforcing they had added on the outside. Uh, they just used a couple of uh, aluminum bars. They just screwed to it. And a good saw is all made, it makes it pretty simple to trim it off. If you have to make a new inner skin, you can install the spacer blocks this way. Also, note the glass overlap over the temporary mold so you can tie it in to the hull. Watch how careful he mixes the catalyst before the reinforcement is added. This is critical. Otherwise, you might end up with a soft transom because if it's not mixed correctly, it will leave you soft spots. Uh, you can mix that material pretty thick and it will still flow into the cavity if you let, use a little finesse. Uh, yes, watch those guys.
Clean it up and it's ready for capping with fiberglass. And here you see the finished product and they clamped five big ones on it. Unfortunately that was all the room they had. Holy shit. And this 55 foot bad boy ended up with a total of 10,000 horsepower and they tell me it goes like hell. And if you look at the final results, there are five big ones on there. There wasn't room for any more, so. And this 55 footer is sporting 10,000 horsepower total. 